Hey, what's up everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about three secrets to success that separate the top dogs from all the rest. What are the three secrets that make the difference that separate the high achievers from the mediocre? What are the three secrets that are really the secret sauce behind what allows the top achievers, the champions in this industry to thrive in the face of turbulence in the market, rising rates, turbulent economy, low inventory, all of those turbulences that you face and all the turbulences that any mortgage professional faces, the top dogs find a way to thrive while everyone else is still struggling just to survive. So what's the difference that makes the difference? What's that secret element? We're gonna cover three of them today. After 15 years in the game, coaching mortgage pros to success, I've learned a thing or two about really the added edge factors that most people are completely asleep to. They have no idea about, and that's why they struggle. So I'm going to peel back the curtain today and unveil these for you so that they're no longer in your blind spot, but you can have this light of awareness guide your path so you can walk forth, run forth, even charge forth powerfully towards your goals and dreams and not be asleep at the wheel, wondering, hoping, wishing, and praying that you're going to achieve your outcomes and your goals. You don't want to just be hoping that you're going to get there. We don't smoke the hope dope here. Hope is great if you're in prison, but it makes for a very bad marketing plan. So you've heard this word before. It's in marketing all the time. Frankly, it's an overused word. Secret, right? We've heard of The Secret, the book The Secret, which is about law of attraction. You see it on Facebook all the time. The secret to success here, the secret to success there. Frankly, it's an overused word, and I'm kind of remiss even using it. Um, or I feel hesitant to use it, but there's a purpose for the word because frankly, even though it's an overused word, people want to know about secrets and intuitively they know there are secrets because the word secret means critical knowledge. In my mind, my definition is critical knowledge in order to solve a puzzle critical knowledge necessary to solve a puzzle or a riddle or to crack a code. Every hour that you spend not knowing the secret, it's causing you frustration, time, energy. Think about it. Have you ever spent hours, days, weeks trying to solve a puzzle, whether it's a Rubik's Cube or a game of some kind or a puzzle of some kind? And then once you fa finally crack the code on it, it was like, Epiphany, aha, you had that aha moment. And every single time thereafter, it was easy peasy lemon squeezy. I mean, it was a hot, like a hot knife through freaking butter. It was easy at that point because you knew what the code was. You understood how to solve that puzzle. It became easy at that point. Sound familiar? Well, people say ignorance is bliss. Screw that. Ignorance is struggle. Ignorance is strife. Ignorance is stress. Ignorance is spinning your wheels in stagnation. Ignorance is wasted time and energy and effort and money. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is striving, stressing, and struggling. So what we don't know can and does hurt us. We know that to be true, and that's why secrets are so powerful. That's why people want to know secrets, learn secrets, become aware of the hidden secrets that hold us back because intuitively we know that not having this information and having it be in our blind spot really holds us back. Case in point, just this morning, my wife asked me to help her put in contacts because about a week later, actually uh, about three weeks prior to this morning, she had just gotten these contacts. She ordered them in, they were arrived. She'd never had contacts before. So of course, if you've ever tried contacts for the first time, you know it's a pain in the ass to put these things in, right? You're poking them in your eye, they won't stick in. You try and close your eyelid, it pops out. You try this a dozen times, it's frustrating as hell. You're like, why the hell am I bothering with this? I need to just get laser surgery or get eyeglasses because these stupid contacts will not go in my eye. 
Any of you guys relate to that? I know I can because I've had contacts for like 20 years. Well, my wife just got contacts. So she went through that trouble and struggle and frustration herself one time. She packed it in. She had those things collecting dust for a whole month. And then she came to me She uh, actually earlier this week and she's like, can you show me how to put these contacts in? I said, sure, no problem. So she asked me to do it this morning. So we get the contacts and I give her a demonstration. I show her what to do with this hand, what to do with that hand, how to open up your eye and how to stick it in there and how to massage it in and remove the air pockets and massage it in from the bottom. I showed her step by step exactly what to do and how to do it from 20 years of experience. And I'd never really thought about my strategy for doing it. It was just unconscious for me. It was what we call unconscious competence. But for her, before she got contact, she was in the phase called con unconscious incompetence. She didn't know how incompetent she was until she tried it for the first time without having a lesson. And then it moved on the next phase of the learning scale, which is conscious incompetence. She was conscious that she's incompetent. So then this morning I walked her through the steps and instead of it taking her hours of frustration and annoyance and trouble and struggle, I was able to teach her how to do it in like five minutes. And now she's got the mechanics, she's got the strategy, she's got the best practice. So she was able to save herself an enormous amount of time by learning these strategies. You guys with me? Another example is in the winter with my SUV, when we first got it, I didn't really understand all the buttons and what to press where and when and how. So we're enjoying that push button hatchback thing. So you push the button in it, the hatchback goes up. Really cool, right? And so it's snowy, it's mucky, it's really slushy out there. The car is just caked in slush. Well, the really cool thing about the push button feature is you push the button and the hatchback goes up. You don't have to get your hands dirty, right? So really convenient. Well, then all of a sudden, one day it stops working. I'm like, man, this is a brand new SUV. What the hell's the problem? I can't believe it's broken already. And I'm settling for having to stick my finger in this mucky door for several days, knowing that this thing's broken and I have to do it manually now, which totally sucks, right? Well, then after several days, maybe even a, a week or two of doing this, get my hands all mucky, I was driving and I looked down and in the dash area, I not noticed a button and the button had this icon that looked like a hatchback and it was showing an arrow like pointing up. I was like, oh my word, I bet you that's the button because it said on off on it and it was set to off. <laughs> So little did I know the reason why it wasn't working is not because it was broken. It was because I just didn't know that I didn't know about this button. And when I switched it to on, voila, bada bing, bada boom, it started working again. So again, what we don't know can and will hurt us. What we don't know will hold us back, period. And we all have experiences and stories about that. True? So with that as a precursor, as a preface, what are some things that we experience when we are missing one of these you know, puzzle pieces, when we haven't cracked the code, when we are doing it the hard way, when we don't know that we don't know that there's a button to push that allows it to work properly and save us time, energy, and hassle? Well, of course, it's stress, struggle, strife, frustration, sleepless nights, wasted time, wasted energy, a bank account that's scraping the bottom of the barrel, all that stuff, right? That's the consequence of not knowing this stuff. So if you're experiencing any of those symptoms, those are all symptoms of doing it the hard way and it's a symptom that you need to crack the code, that there's a missing link you need to be aware of. And once you know it, it's like all of a sudden, you just push a button and the door opens. It's literally that powerful, that profound, and that instantaneous. And the difference it makes in your income, your lifestyle, your freedom, your peace of mind, your confidence, your competence, all that. So that's the good news, that most of these problems that you might be struggling with are relatively easy. In fact, most of them are exceedingly easy to fix once you know how. So with that as the preamble and the preface for the three secrets, let's cover them, shall we? The three secrets 
that separate the top dogs from all the rest. The first secret is this, that you're in the marketing business, not the mortgage business. You're in the marketing business, not the mortgage business. I know that sounds silly, right? Like, of course, Doran, of course I'm, wait a second, you're saying I'm in the marketing business? I thought I was in the mortgage business. And it kind of gets people twisted because in theory, they kind of know that they need to market, but what really makes the difference in you making profound, impactful, transformative, quantum leap breakthroughs in your income is when you take ownership of the fact that you're a marketer first and you're a mortgage loan officer or mortgage broker second. Because how you know whether you truly own that identity of being a marketer first and a mortgage professional second is how it shows up in your daily agenda. Because if you're spending most of your time doing loans, pushing paper, dealing with documentation, sifting through the minutia of operations, you're doing all the mortgage stuff. You're not doing the marketing stuff. If you're spending less than an hour a day in high profit, make it rain, lead generation, proactive, bring in business type of activities, you're spending the lion's share of your time doing mortgages, not marketing mortgages. And top producers understand that the single most profitable activity in their business is not doing mortgages, it's marketing mortgages. Let that sink in for a moment. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Marinate your mind on that. You don't get paid, well, let's just put it this way. If you just do mortgages, you'll make a living. If you become masterful at marketing mortgages, you'll make a fortune, my friends, a fortune, because that's where all the money is. It's the single most valuable, most profitable skill in your business. And yet, how much time do you spend on practicing it, honing your craft, building your muscle, exercising that muscle? Slim to none, right? Anemic at best, right? Well, that's why your income is anemic, because you're focusing on the wrong things. You're making the major things, the minor things, and you're wondering why you're not getting major results. Wonder no longer, my friends. You're not in the mortgage business, you're in the marketing business. And until and unless you fully embrace that and have your daily agenda be prioritized in light of that truth, you will forever thwart your progress because you're focusing on the minors as opposed to the majors. You're focusing on low, income producing activities and that will keep you making a low income. You guys with me on that? So that's the first secret. The second secret is this. Top producing mortgage professionals understand that they need to work harder on themselves than they do on their job. It's a classic Jim Rohn line. Work harder on yourselves than you do on your job. If you work hard on yourself, you'll make a living. If you work or rather, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you'll make a fortune. And it sounds trite, yet it's so true. And most people who struggle in this business put a lot of attention and time on the wrong things, such as marketing, but also on mechanics and tactics instead of learning, growing, and become, becoming a more attractive person. That's another line from Jim Rohn. We don't chase success. It's like a fleeting butterfly. We attract success by the person we become. We can have more because we can become more. And so a great metaphor to describe this is a tree. Imagine that there's a tree and on that tree there are fruit and that fruit represents your results. If you're not happy with your results, aka your fruit, what do you do? Do you poke the fruit? Do you sniff the fruit? Do you polish the fruit? Do you sing songs to the fruit? Do you pray to the fruit or for the fruit? No. If you want to make your fruit more abundant, if you want it to be larger in quantity and quality, if you want to have a more abundant harvest of that fruit, you're not going to poke the fruit. You're not going to sniff the fruit. You're not going to shake the fruit. You've got to get to the root before you're ever going to impact the fruit. In other words, the health of the root impacts the health of the fruit. If your soil does not have proper, proper nutrients, if it's dry, if it's nutrient deficient, 
if your roots are rotting, you're not going to have a fruitful harvest, right? Far too often, people make the mistake of focusing on what's above the ground instead of focusing on what's below the ground. They focus on the visible instead of the invisible. They focus on the fruit instead of the root. But top producers understand, and this is what separates the top dogs from all the rest. I know it sounds woo-woo, but it's the simple truth of the universe. And it's the simple truth of the people who really understand what it takes to thrive in life, in all areas of life. Top producers understand that if they want to change the fruit, they've got to change the root. If they want to change the visible, they must change the invisible. If they want to change what's above the ground, they must first change what's below the ground. If they want to become successful, they need to first own a successful identity. They have to have successful psychology. They have to have successful emotional states. And so it's the inner game of success that most people are completely asleep to that holds people back from becoming all that they're called to become and all they're capable of becoming. Most people focus on doing more. Top producers focus on becoming more. Conventional wisdom, wisdom is I want to have more so I can do more so I can become more. Top producers understand the real truth. In order to have more, I must first become more. And when I become more, I can do more. And when I can do more, then I can have more. See, it's reversed. It's completely reversed. Their focus is in becoming more because the only way you're gonna have more is by doing more. And the only way you're gonna be able to do more and add more value to the marketplace is by becoming more. So it's about focusing on what really allows you to flourish. It's not doing more stuff. It's not making more calls. It's not becoming busier. It's not sending more text messages. It's not hustling your ass harder. It's about becoming more powerfully and more creatively and more profoundly effective at adding value to the marketplace, which means you've got to become a bigger, better version of yourself, my friends. You guys getting that? So you can have more because you can become more, but it starts with the inner game, your psychology, your emotional home, you having an identity as a winner, as a champion, as an overcomer, as a dream achiever, as a goal crusher. You owning that identity and having the wellspring of that identity spring forth in your emotions and your actions and your ability to be resilient in the face of trials and tribulations and challenges is the key to attracting success. We don't chase it, it's an elusive butterfly. It will forever elude you. We attract it by the person we become. Does that make sense, guys? So that's the second secret. The third secret of success that separates the top dogs from all the rest is this. Never invent always improve. That's worth writing down. Never invent, always improve. Does that mean you don't get creative? Does that mean you don't get innovative? Does that mean that you don't use your own God-given ability to get creative problem solving in action to be able to solve a particular problem or to invent something that's never been created before? I'm not saying that at all. No, you certainly can do that. But what we do know is that pioneers get arrows in their backs. And if you want to sign up for trying to reinvent the wheel, chances are that ain't going to go so well. If you want to try and reinvent the wheel when the wheel's already been invented, that's a fool's errand. That's wasted time and energy. You could be spending your time swiping and deploying someone else's proven formula and improving on that and be a whole lot more fruitful doing that than trying to mess around doing it the hard way, trying to reinvent the wheel, right? So emulate someone else's success formula. For example, if you want to cook souffle, I don't even frankly know what souffle is made out of, but it sounds delicious. I think it's made out of egg. I'm just kind of coming up with this on on the spur of the, the moment, but let's say you want to make souffle, okay? And let's say that... You've never made souffle before. You don't have the recipe. You have a basic idea that there's some ingredients that 
might be included in there, like some eggs, maybe some cream, but you're not really certain. You don't really know what temperature it's supposed to be cooked at. You don't know what sequence of the ingredients are supposed to go in when and in what portions and what amounts. So you just kind of got a general idea that there might be a few things to include, but everything else is a mush and it's completely just guesswork. How well do you think that souffle is going to pan out? <laughs> Chances are not very well, right? But what if you were to look online for a master chef souffle recipe? What are the chances that you could mirror and replicate an absolutely delicious, almost perfect, if not perfect souffle that's fluffy, that's delicious, that's on point, that's extraordinary on your first attempt if you had a recipe from a master chef on how to cook souffle. Obviously, you'd be able to knock it out of the park on your first attempt because you're able to follow and emulate a proven formula. You guys with me on that? Notice how you're able to condense decades into days. Notice how you're able to avoid all the trials and tribulations and pitfalls by modeling someone else's recipe. This is the secret of success, guys, that separates the top producers from all the rest. Top producers don't want to have to do it the hard way. They don't want to get arrows in their back. They don't want to be the guinea pig. They don't want to be the pioneer. They don't want to try and figure this thing out on their own. They just go straight to a proven formula. They seek out the experts. They seek out the professionals. They seek out the people who have champion level results in their resume and in the wake of all that they've done through years and years of practice and honing and polishing and reiterating. And they just model that. They swipe and deploy that proven formula. That's why top producers seem like they have the Midas touch. It's not because they have some magic pill. It's because they invest in themselves and their business with a proven formula instead of messing around doing it the hard way, trying to reinvent the wheel, heading east looking for the sunset, going to the gunfight with a freaking butter knife. That ain't going to pan out so well. Some of you are going to the gunfight with a butter knife and it ain't going so well. And the reason why is because you're trying to reinvent the wheel. Stop it, my friends. Or you're modeling people who have a recipe that worked 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but now it's outdated. It's old hat. It's old news. It doesn't work like it used to anymore. It's doing it the hard way because it hasn't kept up with the times. It's bleeding edge, not cutting edge. So we've got to have a proven formula that's proven to work now, not a freaking decade ago. And then we want to condense decades into days by modeling that formula. Then you can get instant success. You can get that delicious souffle on a silver platter served from a silver spoon on day one. Metaphorically speaking, you get instant results, you get rapid results, you get quantum leap breakthrough results. And this is why our clients typically, and this is a common occurrence, it's certainly not guaranteed. I'm, not, I'm certainly not guaranteeing you'll get these results, but this is one of the reasons why it's very typical and quite common for our clients to double their revenue, double their income in two months, three months, four months. Some people even quintuple their income in that span of time. Why? Proven recipe. You show up coachable, committed, resourceful, decisive, and you apply the recipe, it's just like push-ups. If you do your push-ups, you're gonna get stronger. If you sit on the couch eating bonbons, watching Oprah, you're gonna get fatter and weaker. Simple as that. It works when you work it. All right, guys, so those are the three secrets of success that separate the top producers, the top dogs from all the rest. Number one, you're in the marketing business, not the mortgage business. Number two, Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. And lastly, number three, never invent, always improve. Model a proven success formula and build upon that. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. So if you guys would like to learn the proven path to success in this business, if you'd like to bypass the trouble and struggle of doing it the hard way, if you'd like to find out what exactly is holding you back, from the income you want and the income you deserve and the income your family deserves and the income you know you're capable of. If you want to get more clarity than you ever have before on what it really takes and what it's really going to take to get you to that next level, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough coaching call 
with myself or one of my consultants at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. That's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. You can see it right on your screen there. And what we'll do is we'll link up and we'll talk about where you're at now, where you want to be and how we can help you get there. We're going to lift up the hood in your business. We're going to take a look inside. We're going to get real about what's actually going on in your business and what's holding you back. And if we can help you create that breakthrough, by all means, we will show you how. We will give you the prescription. If we can't, we will be the first people to advise you to pass on our service. Either way, though, you're going to leave the call with massive value. Chances are more value than you've had in your entire career in terms of insight and clarity on what it really takes to win in this business. And chances are we'll also have some fun. All right, guys. So I invite you to take advantage of that. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply, just the way you see it on the, your screen there. Book a call. Looking forward to being the catalyst for your breakthrough. So go forth. Take massive action. Bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you'll get massive results. This is Doran Aldana from mortgagemarketingcoach.com with our live podcast for the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. I trust you've gotten value from our time together today. And remember, the biggest gap in life is the gap between that which we know and that which we do. So take that action. Apply what you've learned. Apply these principles to your business. You're going to see a massive difference. Looking forward to connect with you with a breakthrough call. If you have taken that step, I promise you, it's one of the best things you can ever do is getting clarity, seeking out expert support, structure, systems, and help, and finding out what it really takes to win in this business. So I'm looking forward to our connection together and be blessed, guys. Love you. Appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.